Hi, in this video, we're going to learn about ontology management system design and how it works in Labelbox. Every machine learning project starts with defining an ontology. It's the representation of the real world. Being able to quickly create, reuse, and edit ontologies is the genesis for faster iteration cycle in machine learning. So let's learn how it works in Labelbox. We will be using three key definitions in order to understand the ontology management system design. Number one is schema nodes. Think of schema nodes as the tree structure. It contains the information regarding the parent, the child, and the structure of the specific ontology. As you know, Labelbox supports a variety of annotations, bounding boxes, classifications, different kinds of classifications such as radio and checklist, and in fact, uh, nested classifications where you can have very deeply nested um, hierarchical structure. And all of that is defined, the structure of all of these uh, annotations is defined um, by schema nodes. Then there is feature schemas. Feature schemas are the reusable leaves of this tree structure. Each feature schema contains the information for rendering a feature of its kind, such as class name, color, and what type of feature uh, or annotation should it create, such as bounding box, polygons, or, or etc. And lastly, an annotation or a feature is a single component of a label on a data set. Annotation or feature are essentially object instances of feature schemas. In other words, feature schemas can be thought of as blueprint and annotation are stamped cookies using the blueprint of feature schemas. So with these definitions, we arrive to the ontology system design. So when you're configuring an ontology or, or creating the ontology from scratch in Labelbox, you first create a structure and what you use is schema nodes and schema node IDs, especially if you're working with APIs. Once you create the structure, then you have uh, feature schemas which is the definition, uh, which contains the definition of an annotation, uh, such as class name, color uh, for showing up in the UI, uh, and a type uh, such as bounding box uh, or a radio option or a polygon. And if you're using API, then these are referred as feature schema IDs. Now, when you're creating an ontology, schema nodes and feature schemas go hand in hand. That is, they're created at the same time. But for the purposes of understanding, I've divided them into kind of step one as a structure and then you define uh, feature schemas as reusable leaves. But really in the in, in Labelbox UI, it just happens together. Now, using these two things in a project, annotations are created. And the annotation, when you export it, uh, it will contain feature schema ID as well as a schema node ID. Now, in Labelbox organization, when you create an when you create a new project, it automatically creates an ontology, and that ontology contains these schema nodes and feature schemas. Now, these are unique to the organization, which means that you can actually reuse the same definitions in new projects. This allows you to organize your entire training data with a consistent and concise common nomenclature and definitions that are easy to understand and not just um, to machine learning engineers but also programmatically such as you might only want to define car once in your company that should always be labeled perhaps with a bounding box. And if, if that's the case, then you can you only have to create it once and then reuse that definition across all of the projects. This way, you can query label box like find me all the cars that match this definition 
and uh, and and do things with it and you can avoid scen scenarios where <clears throat> different teams are defining cards differently and hence you have a lot of data cleanup to do down the line now labelbox has two ways to use ontologies number one is once you create an ontology, it is possible for you to use the same ontology across a variety of projects. So in this case, an ontology A that contains a set of schema nodes and feature schemas can be shared across multiple projects. And if you make any changes in an ontology A, those changes are propagated to all of these projects at the same time. This, this configuration is particularly useful when you know that the ontology um, will likely remain constant for a long time and that you simply want to create new projects to label different data over time. Now, it's also possible for you to create or clone ontologies. Create, of course, when you're creating a new project, you are creating a new ontology from scratch, but there are times where you might actually just want to clone an existing ontology because um, you uh, are experimenting, you want to use the same definitions, but um, want to do not want to change the uh, existing annotations or the existing schema. In that case, uh, you can simply clone an ontology and um, for, for example, ontology A0 and project one is the original configuration of your project. Well, once you clone it to A1 and A2 and project two and project three and use them in, in the subsequent projects, ontology A1 would basically duplicate all of the, uh, the, uh, the feature schemas and the structure and create new schema uh, nodes and feature schemas, but the content of it would be the same. So this is yet another way uh, to uh, manage your ontology um, across different projects. Keep in mind that uh, when you clone an ontology, you will um, clone those uh, feature schemas and uh, schema nodes. That means that uh, same uh, definition such as car might exist uh, in two definitions. And uh, so you just have to be cognizant of that as you're uh, using uh, and creating the ontologies in Labelbox. Now, all of these things that we I showed uh, sh showed uh, you today, they are available via APIs. Most of our customers um, use uh, both UI for rapid experimentation and development, but then it use APIs for uh, scaling up certain projects. So uh, whatever your workflow might be, um, cloning and sharing and uh, creating uh, feature schemas, uh, nodes and uh, feature schemas and schema nodes uh, are all possible via API. In the next video, we will actually see ontology creation and management in action and some of the unique workflows it enables. Thank you.